This is a woman who is tasked at empowering other young women. One of the things that I did when I was 15 years old is set my mission. What are your core values? Are you creative? Are you innovating? What are my short-term goals? What are my long-term goals? When you know your worth, you know you will never settle. Despite the struggles that we have to go through, we have to rise above them. My name is Liz Ntonjira Motuma. I am a youth advocate, the founder of the Liz Ntonjira Network, and also the global head of communication for Amref Health Africa. For those who do not know Amref Health Africa, it is the largest Africa-based um, INGO focusing on health with over 60 years of experience dealing with different partners, including governments, private sector, and other development partners. UHC for me means that people from all walks of life are able to access health services, whether palliative, curative, promotive, rehabilitative, whatever the... We are present in 35 African countries. Um, we have offices in 12 Europe and North America uh, region as well as three subsidiaries, um, AMREF Flying Doctors, which is more popular, uh, AMREF Enterprises and AMREF International University. I love rap music as opposed to the demeanor I give people. Um, yeah, that's, and, and I love my family and I love cooking, which comes as a surprise to a lot of people. Wow, what kind of kid was I? Gosh, I was a very assertive um, kid that could constantly be confused for difficult um, because I stood my ground a lot of times. It was very hard to bully me. And that's one of the things that I teach my kids, um, never to allow anybody to bully them. I was very ambitious. Um, the first article I ever wrote was when, when I was 10 years old, which was published by The Young Nation. I was really excited because I used to write so many letters to the editor and I would always ask my dad, let's buy The Young Nation, let's buy The Daily Nation on Sunday. And finally, when I saw letters to the editor and my sign off, um, one of my the things I said was featured there. I was so happy we actually framed it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, pretty ambitious, pretty level-headed, uh, always purpose-driven. Um, of course, when it's time to work, I work, and when it's time to play, I play hard as well, which is something that a lot of people think that I don't. I'm not always serious. <laughs> Now with industry contributing about 18% of GDP, the industrial sector in Kenya is a relatively small, albeit important one. The tourism industry earns Kenya valuable foreign exchange and also provides... My journey in TV was very, what do you call it? Is it serendipity? Um, because I was called for an interview because I loved... In campus, I studied law. While I was doing my undergraduate, I was still working um, for True Love, Drum, the East Africa Magazines Limited, the conglomerate of the magazines there. And so I used to contribute and I loved writing. It's been one of my biggest passions. In fact, when I was in campus, I got um, constantly, after eight months of pressuring the editor, I got an opinion editorial with my byline and everything. So I continued that journey of writing. So I was called one day to K24 when it was just setting up uh, to be interviewed about um, young people and writing and why it, it, it's an interest because we don't have many authors who are young people. And after the interview, um, Bart Medley, the late um, Bart Medley, um, called me to his office. He was from the States. He had been contracted to come set up the station. And he said, you speak so well. I think you should try TV and I, was, I told him well and I thought to myself I actually have nothing to lose so that's how I got into TV the first place I ever anchored news was at K24 I started with a travel show which was called Tali Wenjoy and it was exactly that Wenjoy it was non-scripted um, we'd 
visit various sites and sound of Kenya and I loved it. Then I got into hard news. In terms of last year, there was a decrease in the uh, the beach, the coastal beaches uh, visitors by about 17%. Most people and know me um, after maybe I joined Nation. I joined TV when I was pretty young, I think at 19. Um, I joined Nation at 22 or 21. And I joined it when they were revamping the business news um, segment. Um, so a lot of people knew, maybe that's where the seriousness comes in because <laughs> I was always talking about business. Um, so it was really exciting. Um, it was a great challenge. When I launched Women in Power um, and you know, got recognition as the best reporter in gender um, development issues. That for me was just a confirmation or a rubber stamp that you're in the right track. When you compare in the UK and here in terms of the revenue that people get from mm. a painting. After a while, I felt like it was redundant. Um, and I wanted to do more, particularly go back to school to do my master's degree, which was impossible because of the timing. And yeah, so I left TV in early 2014. I think for me, my, I was really resolute in what I wanted to do. And one of the key things is I wanted to do my master's. And I had researched what kind of master's do I want to do with an undergrad in law. And I listed all the kind of organizations I'd love to work in. And I looked at the future workplace and the kind of skills they're looking for. And I really also wanted to understand the public sector. So I enrolled for a master's in public policy and management. Because even when I worked in the fourth estate, what we primarily used to do is hold governments and authorities accountable for what they do. But I really needed to understand how the public sector works. Um, it was really eye-opening. It was a fantastic um, course for me to do. And so I immediately I left media. I joined uh, the Competition Authority of Kenya, which is a state agency that also looks into issues of mergers and acquisitions, enforcement laws, um, consumer protection and I really felt for me it provided an opportunity to utilize my law degree <laughs> and it was a really amazing moment for me and because I was so passionate and when I focus on something it's like a hundred percent or zero percent so I gave it my all and I think what manifested from just that passion was the fact that I was invited by the United Nations um, Convention on Trade to UNCTAD to go and make a presentation on how developing economies can use communication strategies to empower consumers about their rights. And so just sitting there in Geneva making this presentation, for me that was the highlight of my career back then. And I, you know, I thought, wow, there's a whole open field of such amazing things that you can do that I wouldn't have known if I still stuck um, where I was. And right, you know, the master's was about two and a half years. As I continued my one and a half year, I enrolled for the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, the UK. I wanted to get an accreditation for public relations. You know, when I graduated, for me, that was amazing because I graduated last year. Um, in two different continents, the difference of one week. So this week I'm in the UK, this week I'm in Kenya graduating. So for me, that was just spectacular. One and a half years into working in the public sector, I got this amazing offer uh, for a USAID funded project. And my thinking was, you know, nothing could be as fantastic as having experience in the private sector, um, the international development sector, and the public sector. I mean, it was just tick, 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 right? So I, I left to join the USAID funded project. And at the same time, I got selected for the Mandela Washington Fellowship. 
So I left the country for about four months to go do my fellowship in 2015. When I came back, it was um, what I did for um, USAID was policy facilitation and learning specialist for East and Southern Africa. The primary objective of any tech initiative or project is driven by the need to solve a particular problem. Right after that, I joined IBM. So I was taking another, you know, multinational experience. And working there was really amazing. Like working in a multicultural sector where you have different cultures, different races, different opinions about different things, you know. And some of, so it made me really think global but act local, yeah? And then I had some of the most amazing bosses um, who really inspired and empowered me. Um, and since I'd done quite a lot there, and I always gravitated towards social impact stories. So a lot of the work that I did at IBM was business to business. Um, but I saw that whenever we did a story about how artificial intelligence or blockchain is helping um, access micro credit facilities to the Mamamboga. Like those are the stories that would really make my blood pump, yeah? And AMREF is all about that, yeah? It's all about social impact. It's all about the changing the narrative of Africa. Um, one of the, my biggest passion is storytelling. And this gave me, wow, like a play field of working out different stories. Uh, so that's how I found myself at AMRA. What is your mission? What is your vision? What are your core values? The network was birthed, I think, four years ago in my mind. And it was born out of the many, many DMs and questions I would get through my various social media platforms. Either somebody reaching out for me to be their mentor or either somebody reaching out to me um, asking specific advice. So I felt that I'm not an expert in everything and my journey might not resonate with everybody. So why not create a platform where people can engage with thought leaders and we tailor make a mentorship program that really empowers young people. The Leeds in Tanjira Network is a youth platform where we train, coach, mentor youth and access various opportunities for them. To Even if you bake a cake and sell once every month, You've done something. That shows me you're hardworking. You just don't sit around. Empowering young people, inspiring them, challenging them as well. And the reason why I say challenge is I'm a very strong proponent of you should always wake up to be better than who you were yesterday. I shouldn't wake up to be better than Bilha, Mary, Steve, Nick, no. I should wake up to be better than who I was yesterday. But I challenge myself with what either Steve, Bilha, Mary is doing. Always wake up to be better than who you were yesterday. The people that inspire, challenge you, list them. Yeah. The network is basically an interactive platform that coaches, trains, mentors, young people. Uh, we launched in August of 2019, late August. It's been about five, six months. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. We have nearly a thousand youth registered within the platform and we have five components to it, um, but the most famous is the bi-monthly meetup and the mentorship program. I think young people have the wrong idea about entrepreneurship. It's the most difficult thing ever. You don't get the mentor that you think you deserve. You get the mentor that you need. Understand what you are, first of all, where you want to be, and what you love. I'm and a youth you advocate in the sense that since I think I was five, six years old, we'd always hear the youth are the future of this generation. And that is the same narrative that is told to date. This tomorrow never comes. <laughs> So um, one of the taglines I use is um, inspiring young leaders of today because we are leaders of today. Um, we need a seat at the table 
and if we're not given that seat we forcefully take it or create that seat at the table um, and it's really unfortunate that the latest cens census the Kenyan census uh, that was circulated 39% of young people between the age of 18 to 35 in Kenya are jobless youth unemployment is a growing problem and we are tired of the government saying we'll deal with it yet their actions are not reflecting what they're saying it's time rubber hits the road and all these words turn into action what we're doing today we've partnered and collaborated with the link youth empowerment initiative um, for their young mothers um, program their team their couple of teen moms and what we're doing today, we're just talking to it them. It didn't hit me, there was such a huge gap. And the first time, I, I will never forget, it was August 17th, 2019. You know when you set up something and you're starting and you're never too sure that people will show up. But surprisingly, the first ever event, we had about 78 people show up. Yes, I was so amazed. It's 2020 and I'm sure you started it on a high note, setting your objectives, your goals, and things that you would like to accomplish this year and the year. Then we have this other one coming up that has been completely sold out. In fact, this latest one, um, within 24 hours, it was sold out. So my IT lead called me and told me, can you believe it's sold out? Yeah, so there's such a huge need we talk about different topical issues and there's so much more that we have planned. So this is really how to empower them to make sure that their voices are heard. One of the things that I did when I was 15 years old is set my mission, my vision, and identified my five key core values. And I want to help you identify those things that will help catapult you to realize your full potential. Are you a person of integrity? Are you honest? Are you creative? Are you innovative? What really excites me is when somebody comes to me and says, you know, that speech you gave or the words that you said really helped me. The past uh, three weeks, somebody I hadn't, I interviewed her once um, and we never kept in touch. And I interviewed her, I think in 2012 or 2013. Uh, one thing with me, I never delete numbers. <laughs> So I always have, and people get surprised, oh, you still have my number. So she reached out and said, Liz, do you remember you featured me on Women in Power? I have grown, and I'll never forget her story because when we think about starting a business, you're thinking, oh, I need a couple of millions or thousands. She started her business with 500 bob. Eight years later, she's reaching out to tell me thank you so much for believing in me, for giving me the platform to showcase my work. Like I literally had tears that day, like it's so amazing. And the other day, this young um, gentleman came to my office and he said, Liz, I know you don't know me, but I'm an intern here. I just joined, but I just want to tell you in 2016, when I was going through a very difficult time, I'd lost my job and I watched a series of different speaking engagements you've done. Let me tell you, sometimes you take for granted when you have a speaking opportunity, but this young man came with a whole notebook and told me, in 2016, you said this and this, and in 2017, you remember when you spoke about, you said this, what did you mean? Oh my, I was so, I was at a loss for words, and that's why I do it. You need to appreciate your journey. You need to learn your own. You need to run your own. And how you run your own race, I always say is... For the longest time that I remember, I have always been the youngest amongst a senior leadership team. Um, and you know, you have to work 10 times harder if you're young. You have to work 20 times harder if you're a young woman. But I've also been really fortunate that, to be honest, all my bosses have been so amazing and actually I use them as mentors. You know when we talk about mentorship, we always imagine I need Oprah as my mentor, I need I don't know who was my mentor, I need Obama. 
I'm here where I am today because of the kind of women that have been with me throughout my journey. A lot of them have been my bosses. Um, they, they were always empowering, always guiding me. Those are the guys that have really lifted me, my mom, my sister. And it also helps when you have people who are of the opposite sex that are very supportive. I do not remember any time I told my husband that I wanted to do something and he said, ah, I think you're doing too much, <laughs> yeah? He's always been in the front line, lead, cheer, cheerleading me. Like, he's like, yeah, go you, yeah? So it's really important to surround yourself with people that empower and inspire you. I think it's really critical. <laughs> In 2015, being selected amongst, um, out of, you know, thousands and maybe millions of Africa, young Africans who had applied uh, for the Young African Leadership Initiative um, that was later renamed Mandela Washington Fellowship um, that was launched by Obama, that for me was big, like really, really big to represent Kenya at such a platform. Even while there in the US, we were 40 of us from different parts of Africa. I got to interact with Obama, former US President Obama, um, and other US delegates and dignitaries. That for me was just unbelievable. I think Anctad being invited um, for the 14th um, intergovernmental group of experts discussing competition issues and just giving a case study of Kenya um, because I set up the department from scratch. When I joined Competition Authority, it didn't have um, communication department. So just setting that up and being invited for such a high level meeting in Geneva at the headquarters of UN, I, I was I was speechless, yeah. Um, I want to thank God for this. Without him, it would be impossible. I want to thank my dearest husband who flew with me all the way from Kenya. Love you. Also being recognized while I was in IBM as the most exemplary um, employee showcasing uh, great work in media relations in the whole of Middle East and Africa and that recognition coming from the inside because sometimes you get a lot of recognition from outside people um, but internally you don't so just getting that recognition within IBM uh, was a true testament of, of the journey that I was taking a confirmation that all the choices I made till then were actually appropriate being recognized as a community builder for my work in communication um, I think those for me have been really significant. When these things just come up surprisingly, you're like, oh wow. So it, it kinda, it's kinda God telling you, don't worry, you're, you're still in the right path. What to expect, I think, expect a lot a lot of purposeful driven empowering inspiring challenging content and yeah just expect a lot i like looking at a glass half full rather than half empty and the saddest thing is a lot of young people of today love looking at it half empty despite the struggles that we have to go through we have to rise above them and paddle those whatever you feel like you want to do just do it and never let tell anybody tell you that you cannot do it i believe in just doing it and no pain no gain that's that's to be honest simply put that's what keeps me going